What's up, everybody? I'm Ryan Thomas. Welcome to the Thomas Takes Sports Podcast. I'm your host, bringing you another edition of the Thomas Takes Sports Podcast 32 pick segment in which I go from first overall all the way down the line to 32nd overall and give my prediction as to what will happen come draft day, who will go where for every team, who will each team take in their uh, selection for the 2017 NFL Draft. Next up on the docket is the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland picks first overall and 12th overall as of now, and I say as of now, barring trade, in the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft. First overall, I have them selecting Miles Jarrett, defensive end for Texas A&M. Previously, he will be heading to Cleveland as the top pick in this year's draft. Also, um, I have the Browns selecting 12th, so I'm going to give you guys my take as far as who I think they should take with the 12th overall pick. Now, as this draft board is filled segment by segment, episode by episode, time is of the essence. We are a few ways away from the actual NFL draft. So this is my first edition NFL mock draft. So that means there will be another edition on top of this edition as time passes. We haven't even hit free agency yet. Free agency starts tomorrow. I will give you guys live the Thomas take on each and every free agent signing starting at 4 o'clock tomorrow. I'll be going live on Facebook and YouTube following the NFL free agency. This is something that I wanted to do last year. I didn't get the chance to. Now I am. So, that being said, who will I put at 12th overall? Who do I think will go 12th overall to the Cleveland Browns? Do they decide to go on the offensive side of the ball? No, they do not. Not in my eyes. Based on the talent that is left on the board, the Cleveland Browns did invest some picks on the offensive side of the ball last year, uh, getting a guy like a uh, Corey Coleman And they have a guy named Josh Gordon coming back. Yes, we've heard that before, but he is coming back. And their defense was a disaster last year, specifically their secondary. Joe Hayden got a little bit exposed in spades, still one of the top corners in this year's, uh, not in this year's draft, in the National Football League. But the... Class of the corners and the safeties in this year's draft is one of the deepest draft and safety, um, or actually not draft and safety, corner and safety classes in recent memory. And I could have went in a a few different directions for this pick. I could have went with uh, Quincy Wilson. I could have went with Tease Tabor. Um, But instead, I'm going with Ohio State Buckeye Marshawn Lattimore. It would be only fitting for a former Ohio State Buckeye to end up in Cleveland. We've seen it a bunch of times. Brady Quinn, Terrell Pryor, recently. um, You know, Brady Quinn didn't really turn out. Terrell Pryor had a decent year last year as a wide receiver. It's still up in the air as to whether they're going to keep Terrell Pryor. I I think they should do whatever they can to keep him. He seemed to fit their their team. He's not the best receiver, not the worst receiver. He's a converted receiver. Uh, But I think the sky's the limit for the guy at the receiver position. Marshawn Lattimore, though, back to my pick. That's who I have going 12th overall to the Cleveland Browns. Now, as a pun, you could say he was hamstrung by injuries. He's had some hamstring problems. His freshman year, he missed uh, the majority of that season. Um, He missed his entire freshman year. Um, He did end up playing in only seven games in 2015. That was the season where I was really watching OSU and he made virtually zero impact uh, his his next season. So he's really only got one year of starting experience. Um, that issue of his hamstrings came up twice and his redshirt sophomore campaign if that makes sense to the college people that don't know, he was redshirted. It's his second, technically second sophomore campaign. He won a starting job and made the plays on the field that the entire 
his coaching staff of OSU thought he would. So first team all Big Ten pick had four interceptions, nine pass breakups in his first full year with the team. Really what I look at is his athleticism. Minus the injuries, this guy is a crazy athlete. Um, He's a tenacious corner, disruptive inside, and can punch out of his speed. He can take it to another level. He's got pure speed, but his speed gear can go up a notch. 4-3-6, 40-yard dash at the combine, 38.5-inch vertical jump, and 132-inch broad jump. So he's a very, very unique athletic specimen. Measures at 6 feet tall, 193 pounds. He's a bigger corner compared to a Sidney Jones. And really, he has something that Sidney Jones doesn't have, but Sidney Jones has something that he doesn't have, that Lattimore doesn't have. Jones has the starting experience. Lattimore does not. Lattimore has the size that Sidney Jones does not have. So it's apples and oranges in the case of Jones and Lattimore Jones, spoiler alert, I have gone 10th overall to Buffalo. So, that being said, you know, the weakness, only one year of starting experience, wasn't tested by the highest end of receiving talent, and we'll have a bit of a learning curve, but every AFC scout, you know, pro personnel guy, quote that I have read has said that they think very, very highly of this guy. So if AFC teams think highly of him, the last thing Cleveland needs coming off a 1-15 in season is another team taking this guy. Um, I would look for them to take Marshawn Lattimore. Now that could be smoke screens, but I don't think it is. I've seen a lot of other scouts in the National Football League uh, list their pleasures with Marshawn Lattimore, uh, saying that he's a, a dynamic corner, a great player for the future, uh, no matter where he ends up. And I think Cleveland makes sense for him at 12th overall. That gives him a cornerstone defensive end and a solid corner for for a few years, for many years to come, hopefully if he can stay healthy. I think that that's the pick there. Um, you could see offense. You could see a wide receiver from Washington that ran a 4 240 in John Ross. I think that Cleveland needs to stay on the defensive side of the ball you got some real tough teams in that division. You got Pittsburgh, you got Cincinnati, and you got Baltimore. All teams that have quarterbacks that can nickel and dime you down the field. I voice my displeasures with Andy Dalton on the ninth overall pick selection uh, segment, but he has weapons, and those weapons need to be covered. And uh, I think Lattimore is a good fit going from OSU to Cleveland. He doesn't have to travel too far. It makes a lot of sense. Um, And I think Hugh Jackson knows the offensive side of the ball. So if they don't have the biggest names on the offensive side of the ball, it's not as bad as not having big names on the defensive side of the ball because they don't have the coaching experience at at that position as deeply as they do uh, at the offensive side of the ball. Greg Williams comes over. He likes guys that are physical, obviously, no pun intended, the bounty gate, uh, guys that put you know bounties on guys' heads for Pete's sake. Um, Marshawn Lattimore is that type of player. He's tenacious. Uh, he is a guy, a Tasmanian devil, so to speak, for OSU in the short amount of playing time that he had. It was short, but... You know, he was, a, he was a force to be reckoned with. I think that the Browns are in the best spot, you know, in the NFL, in the entire league, heading into this draft. Yes, their roster is the worst in the league. Obviously, that's why they're picking first overall. But to have five picks in the top 65 picks, when teams like Buffalo have only six picks as a team, this is a huge advantage for the Browns. They could play, uh, let's make a deal for a little while on the telephones at the draft, which I anticipate that they will. Uh, this draft in particular we are, are, is really going to make the Browns a lot better. You know, it, it is Cleveland. We can make fun of them all they want for their past. There's plenty of room to, plenty to work with there. But I think that this draft is to be taken seriously for the Browns, being that there is a lot of depth at this draft class at the positions of need in which the Browns uh, have, which is defensive end, corner, uh, building up this defense, and really 
Mitch Trubisky is gone at three on my board. Chicago Bears drafting him at three. If the Chicago Bears get Mike Glennon, I would anticipate that Mitch could fall to 12th overall. And even if Mitch doesn't fall to 12th overall, we could see a guy like a Deshaun Watson falling to the Browns here at 12th overall. Um, that would be a interesting move for them. Would he fit Hugh Jackson's scheme? Probably would. He offers intangibles that Hugh Jackson apparently is looking for. So much so that the Browns are reported to be heavily interested in now now the decided bill starting quarterback Tyrod Taylor. So the Browns have a lot of moving pieces on this team. I anticipate that it's only going to get uh, more active as the NFL draft rears its head on April 27th. You know, the Browns have a lot of money to work with, upwards of $100 million in cap space. They're linked to Tony Jefferson of the Arizona Cardinals, formerly, uh, quite could be quite possibly formerly the uh, Arizona Cardinals uh, as time passes on. So, you know, th- there's definite needs on this defense. They know that, and I think Marshawn Lattimore makes a lot of sense going from Ohio State to Cleveland at 12th overall. That is my take on the 12th overall selection on the TTSP, the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Next up is the 13th overall selection. Mike, or um, I think I might have just given it away. Tune in and you'll find out. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Who will go 13th overall to the Arizona Cardinals? It's a receiver. All right, I gave it away even more. Tune in.